Hey. <laughs> hey, it's Ian and Victoria. Um, to take a quick second to share three important things with you. Um, as we were recording and editing the budgeting video, we just kind of felt a stirring in our hearts um, for a few more things that we didn't share with you um, that we wanted to share before anything else. And that was kind of the depth in our hearts on budgeting and finance, and then also more importantly, what the Lord has to say about it. Um, so I wanted to share three specific things and I know Ian wished he could have been here, um, but he is working. So the first being um, that we don't know everything. We are just just sharing our limited knowledge and wisdom that we've been given over our 20 to 30 odd years um, so take that for what it's worth and then secondly um, that we don't want this to feel like you're being stripped of or that um, you are just begrudgingly submitting into budgeting because that's what the Bible says um, the Lord rejoices over cheerful givers um, he has a lot to say about how chasing money um, and things in life only brings vanity so this is more about a freeing thing for our heart um, to be satisfied um, more than anything else so living inside of our means just means that that we um, can give more and that we can live more because um, we've learned how to live um, within those means and then the third thing that I wanted to share um, was that can be really really easy to kind of look around and say well i worked really really hard for this or um you know i am just i have a knack for business i have a knack for finance or i really know how to build or be an entrepreneur so i deserve these things um, and i just wanted to share with you something that i think would be so freeing and helpful and and that's in second corinthians um, 9 6 through 12. the point is this whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, he has distributed freely, and he has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of righteousness and you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. Um, so the first and greatest point is that if you are a believer, that God has lavished you with grace and mercy in his salvation. And as we become more sanctified, as we learn more about the Lord and our relationship with him grows, we truly understand what a great gift we've been given. And therefore, in that process, we learn to give more to others because we've been given when we were undeserving. Um, so that's the most beautiful thing of all of this is that the Lord's given us a great gift. Um, and then secondly, in verse 10, when he says, he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed. It can be really easy to look in our pantry and say, I've got a house full of bread and I worked really, really hard for it. Um, but right here, more importantly, who supplied the seed? So who gave you that gift um, of a great mindset for business or who gave you the hands to work um, or who gave you that time and energy um, and that that really boils down to the Lord's given us all of that he's given us great gifts each one of us individually um, to really work hard for his kingdom but it's easy to look and say well I I own that or I worked for that um, but how much more freeing when we can look at our things and say I'm merely a steward of this I don't own it um, when we fall into hard times or we fall into great times to look and say hey the Lord's given me a great table let's create ministry and invite people into our home since he's given us a home or it doesn't matter if my car's a beater or it's a, it's a suburban it's transportation to go to work to bring home an income for my family or it's transportation to get me to and from someone else to help them in whatever ministry it's, it, it is or hey he's given me that business mindset so let's flourish in the economy but let me also be thinking continually about how I can give to those around me and how I can share that gift 
gift and that talent that the Lord's given me with a younger generation. Um, so just all things to be thinking about, but how truly freeing when we look at what we own and we don't have to say, well, this makes me a better person, but just to say, thank goodness for what the Lord's given me and um, how do I make much of what he has done in my life? Um, so just things that I wanted to share with you because they've been so encouraging for me and my walk with the Lord um, and I know in our marriage as well. And we just thank you for the time um, that you've spent listening to us and that you are going to continue listening to us. We hope that this budgeting video would be a blessing to you personally and a blessing to your family. Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are going to be chatting today about how we budget and what that looks like for us as a couple and us as a family. And um, yeah, so we'll just dive right in. We are not financial planners. This is what's worked for us. Um, we've had a little experience with it. We've only been married for seven years. So a lot of it is just tips and tricks. Um, we have a uh, quick spreadsheet that we'll uh, send out with it. This is just kind of the stuff that's worked for us, some of the stuff that hasn't worked for us um, and why, um, and a few things that we do here and there. And to start, we're just going to give you a brief, brief background of our history and budgeting. Um, I am an extreme saver. I started saving and working when I was 14 years old. I think a lot of what started saving for me is when I was 14, my dad came to me, um, sat me down and told me exactly how much they spent on me every year and broke that down by month so that I created my own budget as a 14 year old girl on things like clothes and personal hygiene, hygiene products. Um, different things that I had to pay for, like going to the movies with friends, broke all of that down for me and gave me a paycheck basically every month as a 14 year old girl. I learned really quick, like if I spent all of my clothing budget that month, that when school started back in the fall, um, if I didn't have any money, I was going to be wearing high waters or if I didn't save, I wouldn't have new shoes. Um, or I didn't buy the most expensive shampoo because I knew what worked within my budget. Um, and that really set the stage for my entire life. Um, I guess you would call it a Dave Ramsey model because at that time I literally put cash into envelopes and would pull cash out of the envelopes so I mentally and physically could see how much I was pulling out of my budget each month. Mine is pretty similar, um, except for I'm on the other extreme, so I'm a spender. Um, so my parents did a great job when I was young also, and I still remember when my dad gave me my first paper check registry and how to record everything down, how to take stuff out and money that came in. For me, the fast, the fast, as fast as the money came in, that is just as fast as it went out. When we got engaged, we were very open with each other about how we spent our money because we did want our marriage to be set up on honesty and we wanted to go into it knowing um, or having a plan together um, and not just saying like, hey, this is what I do and this is what I do and we're living separate lives. We wanted to work on that. So engagement was harder than marriage for us because we really talked about those things up front and got kind of like the nitty gritty details. And we knew we wanted, when we got married, for us personally, we wanted basically just like one checking account and one savings account. And we did that for a variety of reasons, but you know, for us, what worked best was just transparency and accountability. And um, I manage our budgets and our money um, as far as like the day-to-day -day goes, adding the stuff into our register, into our transactions. And we've digitized everything now, just I think like most people have. Uh, but Victoria is always in there because there's certain things that we spend that we do money on that we put in separate budgets that I don't know where they go and she does. So um, we do it together. Um, we kind of, we both lift, you know, do that uh, heavy lifting at different times. Um, but when we got married, that was for us what, that was really important for us. We wanted to make sure that if we were making any big decisions, whether it be financially or big life decisions, that that we both had, you know, not, not just an opinion about it and a say in where we went, but that we knew why we were moving a certain direction or kind of going from there. So, you know, what that translated into later in life for us was, you know, about four or five years ago, I was able to step out of, you know, a, a corporate job into doing my own thing and start my own company. And the reason we, we were able to do that was because we knew that if something were to happen, that we did have fail safes and we had backups, you know, backups that we obviously didn't want to use an emergency fund and things like that. Um, but it allowed me to step out and to be able to do and to, um, you know, go after this passion that I had. And also for Victoria to be able to be a stay at home mom, because we knew that 
what I needed to make. We knew, um, you know, what she wanted to do. So it also allowed her to kick off the Southern Trunk stuff, to be at home with the boys, but to, to follow her passion and do what she wanted to. Also, since we saved when we were younger, being that we got married when you were 21 and I was 23, um, it allowed us to buy our first home. So we had a uh, luck of the draw with the market being low. So we were able to buy really, really low. So it was a great investment for us at the time, but we always wanted a home to be able to start out with. So um, because specifically because Victoria saved for so long, we were able to put uh, money down on a home and a house. And that's actually the house that we're still in. Um, so being able to do that um, early on when we were young uh, helped us get to that point so that we could be able to purchase the house. Yeah, and budgeting doesn't necessarily mean that you have a lot of money. Uh, when I was 14, I didn't make a lot of money. So budgeting is just taking what you've been given, whether that's your salary or whatever it is, but no matter how big or small your salary is, and it's living with inside that means so that you have the opportunity to live in freedom. Um, and specifically because we're believers, we did want to bring the gospel into this um, and talk about how financial freedom is um, not something that draws attention to us, but we believe biblically that being good stewards of what the Lord's giving us, no matter how big or small, um, gives us a unique opportunity to um, give back to God, give back to our church, and then also give back to people in our community. When we're living with inside of our means. We have more money to give to other people and we have more time to give to other people. I think it's important because when we talk about budgeting, it can be easy to say, um, well, if I budget and I save this much, then I'm gonna have this much in five years and I'm gonna have this huge sum of money in the bank to travel or to spend on a house or whatever that is. And we get these things focused on our in our minds for what we want and what we want to achieve. And there's nothing wrong with wanting, um, you know, to have things in life, but those can't be our focus. And so we always pray, um, no matter, I mean, when we've been in low places and in high places, that whatever we're given, that we would be one good stewards and that we would build a longer table and not a higher fence, which I can't take credit for that quote. It's something that stuck with me forever though, is that the more that we are given, um, the more that the Lord does allow us to have, that we would be giving back constantly. For us being generous, you know, is, you know, where we can financially um, and then where we can, you know, with our time. So, um, you know, we're still trying to do a better job of that, you know, trying to do a better job at building a longer table and not building up a higher fence, you know, around us. Because we do budget on certain things, we do save, you know, if there's ever a time where, you know, I'm out of work or Victoria's out of work and things are strapped, you know, we can still be generous with our time, you know, if money is not always coming in, you know, effectively, because we have saved, you know, and because we have done that. None of what we've been given, even our salaries that we've worked for at the end of the day are ours. Um, the house that we live in, the furniture we have, none of that is ours. At the end of the day, everything belongs to the Lord. And we have to remember we can't take those things with us. So me as a saver, I'm going to be inclined to feel comfortable and safe the more I have in the bank. Um, or, a sa or a spender on the flip side can lean more towards why I'm able to buy more and so I feel more comfortable. So either way, in whatever side you're on, it can be easy to lean towards those things, but ultimately we have, we have to look and say whether I'm a saver or a spender, everything that I have is the Lord's. So how am I treating his stuff? Um, and so when you think of it that way, it's easier to invite people into your home because it's the Lord's home. You know, like this is a place that we can gather in his name or when we're spending our money, are we spending it um, for ourselves and to build ourselves up or to keep up with the Joneses? Or are we spending it because it's something that we need um, or something that we you know, feel like would benefit our family for the name of the gospel? Something that recently stuck with us too, stuck with me specifically, um, was a study we were going through and it's um, the Latin for uh, God willing, it's uh, Deo Valente. And, and the whole purpose of it is, you know, being okay, you know, God willing, we can plan, God willing, we can save and everything else like that. But the other part of that too is being willing um, or being okay that if, if that is taken away, that we don't lose hope, even though it's, it hurts and it's sad and, you know, and we feel those, the worldly pain of sorrow and fear and everything else that comes with it, um, you know, and it's okay to feel those emotions, but at the, you know, when everything 
finishes and completes, you know, that that stuff doesn't matter. And so we uh, we're constantly working through that too, where we try to say, we try to be good stewards. Um, but we also know that, you know, tomorrow, all of that could be gone. Everything could vanish. And then uh, that's, that's focusing on where our hope is and, and it's not in our money and everything. When you look at our budget spreadsheet, um, Everything is funneled through a credit card, um, and the only reason that we do have a credit card is, like I said, we've kind of followed that envelope situation or um, envelope pattern in the past where we've only taken out what we had in each envelope, um, but the more that you're able to practice good habits, the more you can dive into things like credit cards and know that you're living with inside your means as opposed to living in a credit card and having debt. So we do use a credit card, and the way that we use a credit card um, is what we feel like is uh, the best for us and uh, puts the most focus on not just spending outside of our means. So uh, the credit card that we use gives us, uh, I think, cash back. We have options, you have options for points and everything else like that. Uh, but the way that we uh, use it in our, in our transactions and in our register and things that, that you can see in the example that we give um, is we treat it just as cash. So when we have a transaction that we use on a credit card, uh, we put it in our transaction, in our log, um, and it comes straight out of the cash that we have. Even though that's it's only a monthly payment that we pay everything off, um, we do that. So it's does it for us. It doesn't matter whether it's a debit card, a credit card, if it's Venmo or something that comes out of the account. If the cash isn't taken out, we still treat it like it is. That way, we always know where our budgets are. We always know where our actual cash on hand is. Um, and then how much we're actually spending on stuff. We use the credit card as a free means to get cash back and to get points, um, you know, whether it be airline miles or, uh, you know, we travel on our points. Um, and so going into what the budget is, um, if you look at the spreadsheet, you're going to see like basically whatever you can input, whatever your salary is. And this is something that we started, like I said, at the beginning of our marriage. So we took what our salaries were at the time and then we broke up what we had to spend. So things like mortgage, bills, insurance, and we broke those down. So those automatically get taken out of our salary. Um, or those income. are like our base items that, we, that are right. recurring that are pretty much the same every single month. Right. Income. Um, so they get taken out of income, things like tithe. All of those are taken right off the top. So when we first got married and we weren't making as much, we had a tighter grocery bill. And so and it was only two of us. So right. It's not four of us. <laughs> right. So um, below that, we like to put an idea, like a ballpark of what we, we like to spend. Um, like we don't like to spend a lot on eating out just because we like eating at home and things like that. That's just a personal preference. So we have a ballpark of what we'd like to spend. And then next to that is what we've actually spent that month. So that way, month to month, I can say, I can look at the budget and say, wow, I spent way too much on groceries this month, but maybe we had a birthday party or something like that. So we we budget that for next month, we just spend a little bit less. That way we have an idea of what we want to spend and what we actually spend. And then beyond that, we have savings. So we like to live below our budget so that we can dump into savings. And we've kind of broken that down. Um, it can be different for every person, but like vacation um, and traveling is of a higher importance to us. So we put money into that every month. Um, we also like to buy cars with cash and as opposed to having a car note. So we will put savings into a car fund every month. Um, we also put like a college savings, which when I take pictures with the kids um, and they're part of campaigns, money will also go into those funds for them. When we first got married, like we said, we were dipped like on polar opposites of spending and saving. And so um, we didn't want to limit what we were doing. What we, how do I say this? Um, we didn't want to fight, basically, about if Ian wanted to buy like a tech gadget and I wanted to buy clothes. Um, not that we intentionally were fighting, but I think sometimes we put expectations and as a young couple, you for sure do that. Well, you don't understand. Right. Like I look at it and I'm like, I don't care about spending money on this, but you care about spending money on And it. I didn't know why he wanted to spend money on whatever gadget it was. We set aside whatever money and that could be anywhere for, like from $5 a month to $60 a month, whatever your budget allows. And each of us had a whatever money account that we basically, um, it's been our money on whatever. So and the first of each month we deposited them. So right. it was like fifty dollars at the first of every month. So we, we could build up. Right. Or you so could mine save saved. I, I saved a lot of my whatever money so I can make big purchases. As we're Ian, um, when we first got married, was spending his whatever money month to month. 
But what it does is it gives you a little bit of freedom inside, especially if you're a new couple or you're just starting to budget. It gives you a little bit of freedom knowing that you have a small chunk of change that you can still spend your money on whatever. Uh, we didn't talk a lot about long-term savings um, or investing because I think that's a different kind of conversation. But it also varies from person to person. We're self-employed, so that looks very different for us versus someone who's working at a company who um, has different investment opportunities that they can take out of your paycheck and such like that. So we may talk on that later, but we're not really going to get into that now. Um, but we do put a lot of money into our emergency savings so that if something were to happen, um, rainy days, things like cars breaking down or um, you know, maybe we don't get paid for a few months, we have that as backup. If you have the opportunity to meet with a financial planner, we've met with a few over the years and do that too because they definitely have a whole lot more. Um, Wisdom and experience. <laughs> yeah, and, and stuff like 401ks and IRAs, you know, and doing all that kind of stuff. We do a little bit of that, but we, I, we, we're not talking about it because I don't consider us, you know, ex experienced enough in it to be able to share any advice with it. So um, the spreadsheet's pretty simple. It's just a Google spreadsheet, um, and we'll have it um, uh, in the link in, in this video, but you can get it at um, tst.life slash budget and it'll be on the blog so that you can go do go grab it download it it's meant to be a starting point to kind of help um, or to give ideas and to kind of go through so um, the intention is for you to remix it to whatever you want to whatever specific for you whether that be a family budget whether that be just a personal budget uh, to kind of go from there so um, if you have any questions about that specific spreadsheet leave it in the comments um, we'll answer anything that comes in and if we get some good questions from, or some other stuff that you might anybody might want us to talk about, we can give our opinion about it. Other than that, I mean, if you have any other ideas, tips, tricks that you guys have used for your budgets that we can share, that we could apply to ourselves or anything else, please let us know in the comments on Victoria's Instagram. Yeah, so we appreciate you guys hearing us out. Obviously, um, this is just our opinion and our experience for whatever it's worth or whatever you want to take out of it. Um, but we do hope that it would be um, inspiration that you would think about how um, to be glorifying the Lord with your money and your income and how to have a um, gospel sort of view of finances and to always be giving back to him because he is the true gift of life um, that we have here on this earth. And we appreciate you guys. Thank you for subscribing and commenting and we'll see you guys next time.